All right, guys. So I know a lot of you uh, in the audience today are high school seniors who are hopefully uh, submitted their college applications and are anxiously waiting to hear back from admissions. Uh, there's also hopefully a lot of juniors who are studying hard for their SATs and ACTs and are hopefully also uh, getting ready to write those applications. Uh, hopefully a few sophomores as well um, who are working hard. Yes, they're working hard. I hope so. Uh, in their classwork. Uh, as well as a lot of freshmen and middle schoolers, I guess, who are hopefully not slacking off too much. All right, very good. Well, uh, my name is Krishna. I'm currently a PhD student in the electrical engineering department, a first year PhD student. And a few years ago, I was in a similar situation. And by this time, my senior year, I was anxiously waiting to hear back from colleges. And so when MIT got back to me and said that they've offered me an admission into the class of 2012, I think excitement and enthusiasm was like an understatement. At that time, I felt like I was king of the world. I felt like I could literally do anything that I put my mind to. And so I kind of rode this wave of enthusiasm into my first semester there at MIT. Now, like any other freshman there, uh, I was required to take four classes. Now, one of these classes was a probability and statistics class. Now, this class I was particularly confident about. I took AP statistics in high school, and I did really well in that class. And so I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is, this is it. You know, I can really apply it. And I know that I, you know, I got into MIT. I mean, this is, this is great. This is going to be just like a piece of cake. But you know, just to make sure not to be overconfident, I went to every single class, and I made sure to take really, really meticulous notes, you know, really careful notes. And I did all of the homeworks, and I got you know, A's on the homeworks and stuff. It was great. It was going phenomenal. And so one class the professor announces that, all right, guys, in a couple of weeks, there's going to be a midterm exam. And I was like, all right, let's do it. You know, this is my time to shine. This is my time to really put the knowledge that I've gained into something, into something real. And so I made a promise to myself. I said that, OK, with two weeks to go, every day for the next two weeks, I'll make sure to study for one hour in the evening for this exam. All right, good. And I was doing that. And with only one week to go for the exam, I bumped that up a little bit. I went to an hour and a half every single day. And finally, with only a couple days to go, I said, all right, you know what? Two hours a day. So for the two days before the actual exam, I was studying two hours a day. It was going great. Day of the, fin day day of the exam finally comes around. And now this was an evening exam. And it was in like a remote part, like an old dingy classroom in a corner of MIT. And it was at 7.30 PM. And I made sure to go there at 6.30 PM. Just wanted to make sure that it was the right place, you know? I didn't want to miss the exam by any chance. And I double, triple, and quadruple check the location and the time. And I walk into this classroom completely empty, completely empty at 6.30 PM, right? And I was like, all right, where do I sit? Where do I sit? And I try to find the optimum desk, right? The desk <laughs> position where, you know, if I, if I like sit down, I have a great viewing angle to the board in case the professor writes something there. And I have a great angle to the door in case I need to like go to the restroom for any reason, right? It was going great. So I just kind of sat there. And then I pulled out my pencils. And I didn't have one, not two, but three extra pencils just in case, and a big eraser. And I put it to the right. And I had my calculator. It was on TI-84 plus calculator. And I had, that, I had that position 30 degrees away from my viewing angle for optimum typing. It was going great. It was phenomenal, right? I mean, I literally had every single atom on that desk planned out. It was great. So I sat there for about 40 minutes just, you know, pumping myself up, all right? And with 10 minutes to go before the start of the exam, people start trickling in. And with five minutes to go, the professor finally walks in with a huge box of exams. And so he starts passing them out, and he gives me one, and I look at the front page, and it was like a cover page for the exam. And it said name and email. I was like, name? I know my name. Krishna. Let's go. All right. Good. Email. Oh, I know my email. <laughs> Jot that down. And so he was like, all right, guys, uh, two-hour exam. I'll give you two hours to do this. You have until 9.30 PM. Uh, go ahead and start. And I was like, all right, this is it. This is what I've been learning. This is what I need to apply. This is my time to shine right now. Right? So I flipped the page. And uh, now, a little side note about, side note about me. Um, I don't know if you guys do this as well, but when I take an exam, I tend to talk to myself as if like, the exam is like my enemy. Right? So just to pop myself up a little bit. So let me, let me tell you what I mean. So I looked at the first question. And the first question was something about like, the total probability theorem or something like that, if you guys have heard about it. Now, I looked at the first question. I was like, total probability theorem? What are you talking about? This is too easy. You know, this, Mr. Exam, like, this is not the kind of stuff that you ask me. I can do this stuff in my sleep. Come on. Ridiculous, right? So I solved that question, and it was done under two minutes. And then I go to 1B. 1B was a little bit trickier. It was about using something called the Bayes rule or something like that, if you guys have heard about it. Now, again, I was like, oh, you know, you're trying to make it tricky, but I know, I know what's going on. Come on, don't do that. And I solved it, and it was great. 
And I looked up at the time, and it was 7.40. 10 minutes, you know, just in 10 minutes, I solved essentially a third, a third of the exam. There were three questions, I did the first one. I was like, all right, all right, all right, let's keep going, let's keep going. Flip the page and look at question two. And I keep looking at question two. It was, oh man, it was an entire page of text with a figure from like Aristotle's diary or something in the middle of it. And it took me 20 minutes just to understand the question. It was, it was crazy, right? And I was like, okay, Mr. Exam, you need to really ease up a little bit. Come on, it's okay, it's okay, come on. And so I still was trying to pump myself up, and I was still trying to solve these questions. And I was just thinking really, really hard, and I was just writing, 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 writing. And the next thing I hear, the professor's like, all right, guys, two-minute warning. And I was like, ooh, ooh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I haven't even finished question two, much less look at question three, Oh, man, this is not good. So I just kind of blazed through the rest of the exam. The professor finally calls time, submit the exam, and I walk out of the classroom. And again, I don't know about you, but when I think really, really hard on an exam, I just walk out and I have this like horrible, horrible headache, really bad headache. And so I walk out and my brain was just completely fried. It was like, oh, man, this is it. And so I wait a week and, you know, the butterflies start to turn when you realize that, oh, uh, you didn't do too well, but you don't know how bad you actually did, right? So I was just like, ooh, this is not good, this is not good. And so the next week, the professor starts handing back the exams, and again, the butterflies were doing this and this and this. I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. He hands me back my exam, and I look at the exam. And it was a 95 out of 200. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, okay, so now, again, one more thing about me. Now, in high school, right, in high school, I was, I was like a top student. I had standards for myself. Anything below like an 85 was a failure for me. And now you expect me to just accept something below a 50%? Uh-uh, that's not gonna happen. So I made sure, I literally talked to anyone who would listen. I talked to my friends, I talked to grad students, I talked to the TAs, and finally I was sick of it, and I just went up to the head professor. And I walked up to him and I was like, oh, professor, I really don't know what's going on. Like, this is not characteristic of me, right? I, I am used to excellence, but this exam, is not something that shows it. And my professor said something really, really quick. He said, learn from it and move on. Learn from it and move on. That's all he said. And now, again, one more thing about me. If you, uh, whenever I go through something big and it's of the negative variety, I start to really think, and I start to think about everything. But the more and more I thought about what my professor said, the more and more it started to make sense. I mean, think about it. Every time you take an exam, I mean, the grade on the exam is important. I mean, you have to admit, it is important. But what's more important is your ability to recuperate from it, is your ability to l really learn what the exam was trying to give you and pick up all of the mistakes. Now, I can tell you that every single person that's going to be here speaking today has gone through similar challenges. And I can tell you that, for me, that wasn't the only time that it happened. You know, even in research, I ran through these kind of issues, but I made it a point that every single time something like that did happen to me, I would make sure to learn from it. Winston Churchill said that success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. I hope you take his words and mine to heart as you progress on in your very, very successful careers. Thank you so much for listening.